the nature of the dynamics depends on the value of them. Of course, the, the steady state value of the output always depends on the value of the input. That's fine. But the nature here is always the same. You have the same steady state. You have the same settling time, the same overshoot, same everything. And this guy, this may be the steady state, the, I'm sorry, the, the response due to a unit step, first order system. If you increase your input to two, you may get totally different response, became second order system. And if you increase your, your input, you may get even in an, an unstable system, okay? Unstable response. So, uh, the dynamics itself depends on the value of the input for a nonlinear system. And of course, our flow is generally nonlinear. So, what we're going to study during this entire course is the behavior for a small input. How it's going to look like? If you go up in value for your input angle of attack, you have different dynamics. And this is what exactly Joseph is doing because we know the frequency response at small angle of attack. This is what Tudor found in 1938. If you want to get the response. And high angle of attack in the stall is not known. Any question? And this is a, I mean, a topic of research. Any question about that? Okay. Okay. I think that I will not be able to cover what I want today. But we answered two things. What's answer the aerodynamics descriptively? And mathematically. Third, modeling wise. We learned how to model. I mean, you can just review it. You can go to your 136 and review how to model a flat plate, the flow around the flat plate. That's easy. Or the thinner fold theory. How can I extend this model to account for unsteadiness? This is the point. What is unsteady aerodynamics from a modeling point of view? In order to appreciate this or to uh, get it right, uh, we need some necessary tools. The first tool is circulation. What is circulation? So circulation is a global measure of rotation of the flow. How can you tell if this blob of fluid is rotating or not? So if you have a blob of fluid here, and you have the flow field here, two meter per second, two meter per second, two meter per second, everywhere, and so if you take a blob here, maybe a, a square, this is three meter by one meter. Is this guy rotating or not? I, I want to identify if there is a swirl somewhere. Okay? You have a blob of fluid, maybe this blob moving, they are all moving together with a mean flow. And I want to identify if this blob of fluid, there is a swirl in there. Okay? I need a quantity, a quantitative measure of the flow rotationality. And it's not local, it's not at a point, it's a global from some blob of fluid. Okay? Locally, we'll talk about it later, but this is global measure. So people uh, propose this definition for the circulation. It's denoted by gamma, and it's the closed integration of u, the velocity dot dx. And dotted mean in the same direction, right? So let's have a very simple example. Do you think that this flow is rotating? Any, any suggestion or any, any idea that this flow is rotating? What about this guy? So here we have four meters per second. This is the same blob, and we have different velocity distribution. And here is two meters per second. Okay? So uh, what do you think? Is this flow is rotating? Let's apply this definition. So uh, remember, this is uh, this is line integral. 
and it's closed, and you have to have a you have to have an orientation. So we're gonna move, say, like this, clockwise. So uh, this is the, the velocity is u here. This is x and y. Four meters per second. Time is your length, which is one meter. Plus the velocity over there. But I need the velocity in my direction only. So uh, the V motion, the, the vertical component, if I don't have it, zero. And this guy, the U itself is two meters per second. But I'm moving now in the negative direction of the X, so this is negative the length. So you get an unzero quantity. Okay? So this quantity represents how vigorous your rotation is. So if I'm doing it, I'm modifying it a little bit. The same thing, this is four meters per second. This is two meters per second. But now I'm adding this, maybe this is uh, three meters per second. And this is one meter per second, okay? You think this, the flow here is rotating more than this guy or less? The new flow is rotating more or less? More, right? You think it seems that it's rotating more. You're adding as if you're adding a couple here. So yeah, according to this definition, if you compute gamma, you'll find larger gamma. So this is gamma A is zero. Gamma B, this is gamma B. And gamma C, let's get gamma C. So uh, I have the four times one from before. Now this guy just, please pay attention to it, because the, the V, the, the component itself is negative, okay? The component itself is negative, so negative one. And I'm also going negative along the Y, so I have negative three as length, okay? If you have a question, stop me. The velocity component is negative one, because it's negative Y, and I'm going against dy. Then I have from before the two times negative one, and finally I have here three times the length, which is three. And you add all these guys together, you have from before we already got two, and here we have three and nine, so 14 or so. Anyway, so this is gamma. Okay. So this is how we compute circulation for a block of flow. You just do a line integral of your velocity field dotted with the length in your direction, okay? So anyway, so to me now, circulation is a measure of how much the flow rotates in, a, in some contour, in some block of fluid that is enclosed by a closed contour over which I'm integrating here, okay? Any question about that? So this is the first essential piece of information that we, we will work a lot with circulation. And Amir here is also doing a lot of work with circulation. Then we will immediately know now why this is important because of the lift, the kopta jakovsky lift theorem. Early 1900, I don't exactly remember the years. 1904, 1906, I guess, by Kotta and independently by Joukowsky. I'm not sure about the dates now. Okay, what does it say? So I have my U infinity, my flow field, and I have my flat plate. In order for this guy, this is a flat plate and this is some angle of attack, positive angle of attack, we will generate lift, upward lift. Here is my upward lift. In order for a, a positive upward lift to generate, what about the pressure difference? Pressure upward, pressure to the lower surface, the upper surface. Which is greater? In order for a positive lift to generate, I must have the pressure in the lower surface is higher than the pressure in the upper surface, correct? So this guy, is higher than the pressure on the upper surface. And here we're talking about 
about steady flow. It's, it's nothing fancy here. This is steady flow. Let's talk about steady flow. So uh, if it's inverse steady flow, then I have the Bernoulli equation applied. So P plus one half rho V squared is constant. So if the pressure increases on some surface, the velocity has to decrease and vice versa. Okay? Okay, so this means that I have my flow field here, U infinity. On the upper surface, because the pressure is lower, I have the velocity is higher. So I have the flow accelerates in the upper surface. This is U infinity plus some delta U. Whereas here it's U infinity minus some delta U. Okay? So ideally, look at this, because this is important. Ideally, I have my flow field coming equal on all sides, but because of the existence of some non-zero angle of attack and the lift generation, I have the flow accelerates on the upper surface and decelerates on the lower surface. It's as if I have a circulation here, gamma, in that sense exactly, that accelerates the flow on the upper surface, and here on the lower surface it decelerates the flow, it's opposing the flow. So this is something like this. This is here opposing, this is here augmenting the flow. So I have the end result is u infinity plus delta u, but here is u infinity minus delta u. This picture tells you the story. What's the story? The lift is due to pressure difference, which is related to velocity difference, which is essentially related to the circulation. I.e., in conclusion, lift is essentially related to circulation. We can derive it mathematically in a minute. So the lift, the two-dimensional lift, is the integral from zero to cold, the pressure difference, lower minus upper, as a function of x dx, correct? So for the Bernoulli equation, this is one-half rho v squared. So v squared, so here is one-half rho v squared. It's the other way around. It's pressure lower than minus upper, so velocity upper minus lower. This is again function of x dx. So let's substitute because I know the velocity on the upper surface. It's u infinity plus delta u. This is squared minus u infinity minus delta u. This is squared. This is all dx. And you can see here that the u squared goes away, the delta u is go the, goes away, and you end up with 2 u infinity here and 2 u infinity here, so it's 4 u infinity times delta u. Okay? So the left is 1 half rho times the integral of this quantity, which is a function of x, because this gross distribution is function of x. That's fine. Let's go now and get the circulation. Because we know a definition of the circulation, right? So here is the definition of the circulation. What is that? Gamma is the integral of u dot dx, right? So this is what? The integral over the upper surface. Remember, I, I need the gamma around the airfoil, okay? So I will go with the x-axis on the upper surface. I'm, I'm coming back against the x-axis on the lower surface, okay? So I will have what? I will have integral from 0 to c, the velocity in the upper surface, u infinity plus delta u, dx. Plus, on the lower surface, whether you like to do it in negative right away from 0 to c, the velocity in the lower surface is u infinity minus delta u, okay? And now again you have this u infinity cancels and this gives you what? Integral of 2 u infinity delta u. So let's relate here. We immediately get this equation. The left is, I have rho, I have, 
I'm sorry, there is no there is nothing up with you, right? I have rho, I have u infinity, and I have the gamma. This is Kotashikovsky left it here. So now we want to me lift is circulation. Okay? Lift is mainly due to circulation. Your capability of forcing the flow to circulate will create lift. If you think about the two essential ways of generating lift, how? By cambering your airfoil or by making an angle of attack for a non cambered airfoil. Both make the flow deflect. You have to create a curvature for the flow to deflect in order to create this circulation. Left is mainly due to circulation. Okay? Any question about that? So we learned what is circulation, and now we learned that left is mainly due to circulation. The third essential piece, the third essential piece is uh, Kelvin, Lord Kelvin, Thompson. Circulation theory, known as law of zero total circulation. So, if I have my airfoil here and I have a contour around the airfoil, and I have my flow field, so uh, as the flow evolves, this guy enlarges like this. So uh, this closed contour has to encompass the same fluid particles. So as the flow comes, this guy will expand. Because the, flu the fluid particle will travel with the flow. So C as a function of time. Around this contour, I have gamma. And because this guy evolved with time, gamma may change with time. And I want to know how gamma changes with, changes with time. Along the flow. Okay? This is a question. And it turns out to be easy to answer. So, okay, let's see. Let's apply the definition. What is gamma? Gamma is the integral along your closed contour, C of t. Here is your definition, your tx. Okay? Let's get g by dt. What's that? Well, if you're differentiating an integral, you have two terms. You get the derivative inside. Okay? 